we all grew up reading The Lord of the Rings or The Hunger Games, whatever it is. My argument is that things that actually happened are just as amazing as things that happen in invented worlds. I grew up on Missionary Ridge, a Civil War battlefield in Tennessee. When I was little, you could still find little Civil War bullets in trees and in the yard around the neighborhood. So for me, history was always a tactile thing. It was something you could see. It was real. I read big biographies uh, about big people, Winston Churchill, Franklin Roosevelt, Thomas Jefferson, and began to see that history was not boring. History was not something foreign. It wasn't an academic subject. It was an unfolding story, an organic story, with heroes and villains. I started out as a journalist and was consumed by hour to hour, day to day, week to week deadlines. And slowly realized that what I'd like to be able to do, what I wanted to try to do, was tell a story in full. One of the reasons I wanted to write history was to show that we have overcome extraordinary obstacles before and succeeded not with superheroes in charge, but with the same kinds of people the same human beings that we have now. Jefferson was the most important politician of the early republic. He solved problems, he put himself in the arena, he cut deals, he cut corners, and made a country work. I wrote The Art of Power, obviously, for an adult audience. If we didn't create an addition, for younger people, then we were foreclosing a possibility of engaging them in a hugely important conversation that's important for them as readers and as people, and it's important for the country. I think the task really was to tell the story in as straightforward a way as possible. If I quote a letter from Jefferson, you see a letter from Jefferson. If you talk about Monticello, you see Monticello. Visually, this is a much more accessible edition, really, than the adult one. I would hope that young readers who engage with Thomas Jefferson, president and philosopher, will come away with two things. One is a belief that politics matters and that you can make a difference. The second thing is I don't think there should be any limitation on one's capacity to be interesting. Jefferson was fascinated by everything you can imagine. Food, architecture, art, women, wine, music, public life, books, and that's a good thing. Thomas Jefferson was born a subject of the British Empire and died as the third president of a continental republic that would rise to be the most important nation in the history of the world. My goal with Jefferson was to tell the story of a very human, very flawed politician who did the best he possibly could with what the world offered him. And that's all any of us can do when you really think about it.